we'll get underway straight away with Rob Dorsey from Sky Sports News. Hi Gareth, good to see you. Um, the squad's a little bit depleted, um, but you've decided not to, to call up any reinforcements. Can you explain mm. that decision for us? It, it, do, you, do you feel that maybe there's just not a big enough pool of players that you would like to call on? No, um, because we've been training with this group all week. To call somebody from the outside would be potentially quite complicated. You've no idea where they might be, what their training load has been over the last few days. So if we were going to do that at this point, we'd do it with the under-21s. But um, they've got a game today, and um, we think we've just about got enough to, uh, to get through the game. Um, Luke Shaw's decided to stay on with the squad, which I think shows admirable commitment on his part when he can't play because of suspension. But hearing you speak recently, I wondered if that's by contrast with maybe some of the frustration that you're feeling, you're not seeing that same level of commitment to England from maybe one or two other players. No, I mean, Luke, Luke to start with, is, uh, loves being with us. Um, I think wants to contribute where he can. He was able to help us with training today as well. So um, I think he just epitomises the, the spirit of the group, really. And um, that togetherness and that commitment is, is hugely important. OK. Um, I want to ask you about the midfield in particular, because um, Jordan Henderson, I think, missed some training going into the Italy game. Is that right? Well, not with us, but he hadn't trained a lot the previous week. He'd had uh, an illness, which was the reason he missed Liverpool's... Uh, game the week before so he was a little bit undercooked for that but he's in he's good now he's and good to go uh, yeah yeah um Jude Bellingham <coughs> lim limped off and looked in, in quite a lot of pain when he came off in, in Naples as well and, and Calvin Phillips played almost double the number of minutes for you that he's managed all season <coughs> for Manchester City I just look across that whole of that midfield and and can you update us on all of them and, and whether you've got any concerns there no they're they're all good uh I mean clearly Calvin um that's his first 90 for a little while he, he had 90 at Bristol City in the cup but um, so we'll just have to assess freshness as much as anything but that's the same with the whole group it's it's that time of the year and um, we've got to get the balance right of continuity consistency um, but also freshness it's a crucial game in the in the qualifying group frankly if we can um, follow on what we did the other night and, and win this one um, then we're in a really good place. Jordan, if I can ask you, it, it was a magnificent win um, for England out in Italy. Yeah. And you've been part of this squad for a long time now. I wonder whether you're seeing a new England with, with the nous and the, and the experience and the belief to kind of go to places like Italy away yeah. and win and see out a, a game like that. Yeah, it was a massive game, you know, in history. We haven't won there for a long time. I um, feel like we um, the steps we need to take forward to become winners really in major championships. Um, I remember the Spain game away when we won 3-2 in Betis Stadium. So just another marker we're laying down as a team, you know, our togetherness, our squad mentality, you know, to go forward and to be able to beat Italy away from home was a massive game for us. Uh, and Gareth, I'm, I'm sure you've got huge sympathy for your opponents um, that, you, that you're facing tomorrow and what they're having to deal with outside of football. But because of all of that turmoil, does it make it a little bit difficult to predict exactly what side you're going to come up against? No, I would say it's uh, entirely predictable. They're very proud. We saw that with um, right at the beginning of the war when they went to Scotland for the playoffs and, uh, and Wales. They're a very proud group of players. You can see that totally committed to uh, bringing um, enjoyment to their... Um, to their public and um, yeah we, we we of course have huge sympathy with with what's going on and support for what's going on but tomorrow's a game of football and um, we're, we're fully focused on trying to win the game thank you hi Gareth um, it's Ivan Tony's second time with the squad didn't make his debut last week how's he got on this week and is he likely to play tomorrow well he's been very good um, we really like him and uh, he's, he's very much in our thoughts. You know the numbers we've got with us now. So um, it would be, uh, yeah, th there's always the dual objective, you know. Um, there's, of course, a desire to, to see players, but we're in a qualifying group. We've, we're, the priority is to win the game first and foremost. So whatever we decide is with a view to doing that. And the win in Italy was your 50th as England manager, only the third, uh, third manager 
to do that. How would you look back at your time as manager and what does the <laughs> record mean to you? Um, well, it means that we have a chance to make it 51 tomorrow. Simple as that. That's all I'm focused on. Um, the, the past is irrelevant. What we've done up to this point, irrelevant now. I'm, I'm just focused on tomorrow's game. We need to win. Um, we need to be on six points when we leave Wembley tomorrow. And um, if we're going to be considered a really top team, then we have to back up a result and performance, um, different elements of performance that we showed the other night, and we have to do that tomorrow. You've had time to look back at the game in Italy now. Why do you think the team got into such difficulty in the, in the second half? Because we kept giving the ball away. It's, it's simple as that, you know. Um, if, uh, if, you, if you don't keep possession of the ball, then you're going to have to defend. And uh, we did that at the beginning of both halves, actually. So in the first half, we recovered that. We showed really good composure and we had control of the game, That's as well as we've played with the ball against the top team, I think. Um, in the second half, the errors gave them a bit of enthusiasm. Of course, they were 2-0 down anyway, so they had to go for it. They were a bit more aggressive in, in their pressure. Um, and then when you concede, if, if, if the stadium changes, the emotion changes, and uh, you're, you're in a difficult place. So what pleased me was the resilience we showed. The, there's different qualities needed to win football matches, and you've got to show all of those things. So. Um, if we could put both sides of the game together, um, then that would be the ideal tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. And one to Jordan, please. Uh, your teammate Vitaly Mikolenko is in the Ukraine squad, and as Gareth touched on, there's a lot going on in Ukraine off the pitch at the moment. Have you spoken to him about the fixture tomorrow, and what's he been like during this time? No, yeah, I haven't spoken to him, you know. Um, but since he's come in, he's been brilliant. Gone through a tough time at home, you know, for the nation. But he's a great lad, great to work with down to earth, gets on for his job and he's a top player. Um, but they've all got good players in that squad and we've got to be wary of them. But again, we want to win. Thanks, Alex. James on it. Gareth, I know you're, um, you're obviously focused on tomorrow, but the, the reverse fixture with Ukraine is, is six months away. There are obviously a lot of logistical challenges with this, to say the least, but would your hope be that you could actually play that game in Ukraine? Uh, I've not even thought about that. Um, I'm only thinking about tomorrow at this moment. Um, other people will have those discussions, and, um, yeah, it, it, it's, um, it, it's, we've got several matches before we get to that point, from my point of view. OK, thanks, James. Do we have any other questions in this section? No. Oh. Last one from Rob Dawson. Uh, Jordan, can I just ask you one, is, is an elephant in the room really with what's happening back at your club, it's happened while you've been away with England. Um, how worried are you by the fact that Everton have been told that they've been charged by the Premier League for alleged breaches of financial rules? Yeah, I've obviously seen that on Sky Sports and I believe Everton's put a statement out there and that's all I can really say really. My, my job's playing football and keeping the ball out the back of the net really. So uh, yeah, I've seen it but I can't see any more. Thought you might say that. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, it's a good plug for Sky, though, Pickers. Yeah, well. yeah, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll run that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thanks, everybody. Um, we'll conclude it there. Thank you.